Chips here and the Metal Theologian. Alright, so this purpose of this video is uh, I got a pack in the mail, kind of a surprise. I have absolutely no idea what's in it. From a fellow, uh, actually, I was going to hold off, but this is from Mr. Eric Bauer, who, uh, it's funny, a lot of my regular viewers probably won't be familiar with him because he does a lot of black metal in addition to, um, you know, more sort of uh, old types of metal. And it's funny how, like, the community seems to be kind of segregated that way. They're like the black metal guys and the old kind of metal guys. But I really like Eric's channel anyway. I mean, because not only because, you know, I spend a lot of time listening to black metal, even though I don't talk about it on my channel. But he also talks about tapes a lot, and I think tapes are kind of underappreciated. I mean, yeah, LJ shows some once in a while, and uh, I've seen a couple others here and there, but just kind of cool to see, like, these obscure-ass demos that he'll bust out sometimes. So, uh, and plus, he's a cool guy. You should all subscribe to him. I'm going to do my very best to remember to put a link underneath. Um, but uh, just to keep everyone interested in case... Uh, I, I have no idea what's in there. But... Um, I was just saying, in case it's black metal, but I really don't have no fucking idea. It could be Donnie and Marie, for all I know. We are listening to uh, Raven Bitch. This is my uh, classic copy that got all chewed up. Um, it's a fucking great record, though. Love to upgrade this cover someday, but it's my copy, you know? It's one of those things. The guy who sold it to me said the cover was kind of chewed up. It's kind of a funny story. The guy, I can tell this to you, he's like, the cover's a little chewed up, though. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay. So, you know, I figured... I use that as, like, an idiom, right? So I figured, you know, it'll be a little chewed up, like, you know, like the way this one's a little bit chewed up, you know, there's a seam split on the top, it got a little bent in the mail, you know, maybe a little bit more spine wear or something. Like, no, it was literally chewed up, like, you know, like spy mice or something like that. It's fucked up, so it's kind of a funny story. So anyway, Raven Bitch, fucking great band from uh, Janesville, Wisconsin, which is, uh, Paul Ryan's district, um, which I'm not going to talk about today, believe me. Anyway, we have something really special for Soda Speak. It's kind of a cheat because it's not really a soda. But uh, I found this basil seed drink with honey. And um, if you don't know what a basil seed drink looks like, it's actually kind of getting condensation. Look at that. Can you see that? Mm-hmm. It looks like there are like paramecia in there or something. You see that? It's funny because this would have been more weird before those chia drinks got so popular. I've actually had basil seed drinks before, not this particular one. And it's pretty good. But look at that cap too, man. Isn't that awesome? This is why you go to the Asian market when you're looking for weird shit to drink. So, I can pretty much guarantee that this is not carbonated. But look at how fucking awesome that is, man. I'd be a dick if I kept this to myself, right? Okay, maybe I show sodas. It's Soda Speak, ripping off Grown Man Record Night and all. This isn't a soda, okay? But come on, you know? So we're going to bust this out. Spencer's actually trying to decide. Look at this. Spencer's trying to decide whether he has the balls to try this or not. And I hope I don't cut myself or spill it. Christ, this is embarrassing, man. Now I'm going to get a fucking bottle of this. Just give that to me. You can do it if you want. I just want Okay. No, I've got this. Got it? <laughs> yeah, see, the ring came off. I saw that coming. Give me the fucking thing. You're going to warm it up with your legs. All right, come on. Let's get back to business here. Well, this someone is... has to hold a camera. Yeah, that's right. God damn it. I can't believe what a fucking pain in the ass this is. Jesus Christ. I cut this out of the video later, but it's kind of funny, so. Yeah, you'd cut this out. Uh, I just dropped the metal tab, so. Oh, careful. Yeah, Make pick it up okay, before someone you know steps something? on it. We're going to totally cop out. Watch this. I can't get up with the fucking opener either. Where are you, are you getting. Are you serious? Watch. Yeah, you're going to pour it into the glass, right? Yeah, this is whack. I'm actually going to pierce the top because I can't get the fucking thing open. I don't know, man. Maybe the Chinese have, like, freakishly strong fingers or something, but <laughs> I can't do it, man. Or maybe, like, the aluminum... The Illuminati? Like, what? The Illuminati, is that what you said? Yes, that's exactly what I said. Maybe it gains strength. Oh, wait. Oh. <laughs> what a fucking nightmare. 
Jesus, God. You might even be able Are to get pour this? it. <laughs> that smells good. We can just upload this video as ah. like a separate... <laughs> Look at that, I cut myself. <laughs> Look at that, I'm bleeding from my art. Just like... This can be a separate video, just trying to get the thing open. I just hope all the seeds come out. <laughs> yeah, so while we're doing this... I'm trying to think, should I talk about Eric some more, or should I talk about Raven Bitch? Because I already talked about both of them. Um, Raven Bitch is fucking fantastic. Um, I actually got that from the singer of the band. So, uh, you know, it's kind of cool with these guys who put out these private press records, you know, is if you manage to track them down and you still dig their record, they're so happy, you know, it's not like, uh, you know, Bruce Springsteen or something where he's jaded and doesn't give a fuck because he's just like, I don't know, thinking about how great Hillary was or something. All right, so here we go. Might actually get a different sort of perspective on it. I really did cut myself. Look at that shit. It's fucked up. It's just a paper cut, but... It's never happened to me before while I was opening a goddamn drink for a video. <laughs> so look at that. Doesn't that look weird? Try swirling the glass so they move while you drink it. This is awesome. You can taste the honey. It's real honey. It's not carbonated, okay? Here, have a bell. The seeds, like they're like they're like little seeds with like this slime around them. But like, if you like like those boba drinks, like with the um, tapioca pearls in them, there's nothing weird about this at all. Is it freaking you out? It's not freaking me out. It's just so. You want to sip before I take it down? It's something else. All right. Mm. Top shelf, man. God, that was worth the effort. <laughs> yeah, if that had tasted like shit after all that effort, man, I'd have been kind of pissed. So, all right, so let's see what's in this pack. You sure you don't want to sip? Sure. All right, cool. Just making sure because it's delicious. All right, so we're going to see what Eric sent me. This nice oversized box, well packed, because you know, we know how to pack up records. If you're watching this and you're like a jazz guy, which you, which you probably aren't, because I've probably driven you away with all the metal I've been doing lately. But if you're a jazz guy, or an old style metal guy, I want you to take note that like the black metal guys, they know how to pack their shit too. See, look at that, look at that, fucking. This actually looks like the boxes they use at uh, EB Reggae. <laughs> All right. I was kind of wondering what the hell this was, but that's uh, a stiffener is what it is. Oh, holy shit! All right, because I'll, I'll go ahead and share the note this time, okay? Because everyone needs some high racks in their life, this one is less religious than the debut, but equally crushing. Uh, Caton's vocals are on point. Haha, <laughs> as always. Enjoy, man. I do not have this record, and not only do I not have this record, but I have never owned this record. Um, the only high racks I own, look, I've got some Johnny Mathis as a stiffener, too. And by the way, LJ, if you're watching, I just said stiffener. Um, here. I'm going to take this off because I'm going to do it when I crack it anyway, but um, look at that. What was I going to say? Oh yeah, the only one I have is uh, The New Age of Terror. And I saw them on that tour, and I thought they were great, but I never um, went back and got the old ones. That's um, an awesome picture. What, that one? Yeah. Yeah, that's Kate, and I actually met him a couple times. He looks a lot older now. Yeah. Alright, let's 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 uh, bust this out, though, because, you know, the new style VCLT, we don't uh, just show it and go, Hey, look, I wonder what this sounds like. We're going to put it on for a minute. Although I don't think Hyrax is exactly the most obscure band on the planet. We're going to fucking put it on there and let it play for a minute and let it soak in. See, here's the deal. The reason I never went back is because they were a little bit... I remember them being a little bit too hardcore for my taste. 
they're sort of one of those bands like DRI and like Broken Bones. Although I, I don't have anything against any of these bands, but it was like historically when I've been in the mood for punk, they've been too metal, and when I've been in the mood for metal, they've been too punk. Okay, so what we're gonna do the purpose of this exercise because the high rack shit. The newer stuff is definitely, note the jeans trick here, by the way. The Hyrax stuff from the last, you know, last several records is a lot more, um, uh, it's a lot more firmly in the metal camp. So this is, I mean, I actually wouldn't even know this, but he said it's their second record. He you know something I would know it. I don't remember what the first one was called, though. Um, anyway. It's one of the Metal Blade ones. Check out the classic Metal Blade logo. These guys are from Long Beach. I'm not sure. They might, might be LA, but I think it's Long Beach. Look at, actually, this is kind of a good sign, too. Look how short that is. Look at how long that runout groove is. I've got a sucker for that. The first copy of In God We Trust Incorporated by the Dead Kennedys that I ever owned had, like, this much on it. And, like, the rest was all runout groove. And if you know how short that record is, that won't shock you. Now, the one that I have now, the grooves are more evenly distributed. And it probably sounds better for that because it's better for the fidelity if your grooves are fatter. But it looked funny. And, you know, I live for laughs. So here we go. We're going to fire this bad boy up and see if those basil seeds come back up. Or if I go, God damn, that's a really good record. It's actually awesome. Am I even in the shot? No. <laughs> Come on, Bob, it's my video. <laughs> Yeah, but I've never seen Clutchman get this far. Are you okay, it's not that short. Yeah, totally. Now it's kind of punky. This is awesome, though, man. I'm really digging this. I gotta dig. Next, I appreciate the next to the Venom picture disc. There's a Witch Find picture disc, Cloak and Dagger. Just seeing so you know, up there into the obscure shit. The guy's got an early MDC shirt too, so. It's funny, sometimes they give you these little hints when they're actually record collectors too. Alright, well I'm digging this, Eric. This is awesome. I totally appreciate it. And um, I'm gonna bust off the strap, I'm, or I'm gonna take the shrink wrap off. I'm gonna keep the fucking hype sticker there. And this is perfect for the kind of mood I've been in, too. This is awesome. All right, thank you so much. And everyone else, thanks for watching. And, oh, hey, I just thought of a joke. You want to hear a joke? All right, knock, knock. Who's there? Stu. Stu who? Stool. <laughs> <laughs> Quick little addendum. Um, you know, I just cut myself, and it's not, like, super bad or anything, but it's in an awkward place, so I'm going to put a band-aid on it. And I just want you all to know that I use Spongebob Band-Aids exclusively. So, um, you know, I don't actually put Band-Aids on my fingers very often. So uh, I figured I'd share with you uh, which one I pull from the stack. Wow. Because it's always a surprise. Did you get him? No, he's already oh, dead. Yeah. <laughs> Here, check that out. I got Patrick. I don't often put... Band-Aids on my finger. But when oh, I do... <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Well, thanks again for tuning in. Hope you got a couple laughs. My day is pretty much made. So, take care. Don't cry, Easy Mac.